what would your wife, your dear wife Mary, and, and your children say about the toll that it takes on you and by extension on them of you having been a, a pastor? I think that um, all of my kids have, my three have uh, reacted differently um, and their reactions to my career has been um, different. I think one of my children thinks that people are just goofy. I think one of my children thinks that the pastor has taken a toll on my health. And one of my children is just angry. Mm -hmm. um, because he just thinks that it's, things are unfair. You know? Yeah. Um, I think um, I think Mary, um, when she was in, um, when she was a young woman, uh, well, a girl, I think she thought that maybe she would marry a minister. God was preparing Because she was a masochist? Or? <laughs> yeah, 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 she was just, um, um, she didn't know what she was getting into, um, but she grew in, into that role. And um, she learned to uh, moderate her feelings about things. I think one area where she grew the most, and for, it was early on in our ministry at Beverly Heights. My first three years at Beverly Heights were, were awful. Um, after about three years, she and I wondered whether or not we had mis made a mistake coming to Beverly Heights. Um, all the things that up to that particular point I was affirmed in my preaching, my teaching, leadership administration were all anathema to people in the congregation with loud voices. And we said, I, 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 um, I, 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 mostly, I, mostly entrenched people who had been there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, uh, yeah. And, um, well, at any rate, yeah. um, I would come home and on particularly difficult days, you know, and her love for me was demonstrated by her desire to help me figure things out. And I finally said to her, I don't need you to be another staff person. I don't need you to be an associate pastor. I need you to be my wife. Yeah. Um, and so what did that mean? That just meant trying to understand, <laughs> you know, the, the ver how far bent over I was when I walked in the door and what that might mean for the rest of the night, you know, with the right. family and, and all that. Better whip up a pecan pie. Yeah. <laughs> I just came yeah. home and yeah. he's looking the search right. way. <laughs> yeah. You look at my size and you can see that she was ministering to me with food for 33 years and still is. Good food, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How about you, Nate? How's it affected, do you think, your children, your wife? What would they say uh, about the impact on the family and on them of you being minister, senior pastor of Beverly Heights Church? I, I have a very special uh, burden and patience and c concern and love for pastors' wives because they get no training for their role. Their role. They get no budgetary support for their role. They get no acknowledgement of their role. But if they don't do their role, everybody knows it and they'll let you know that it's not getting done. Yeah. So right. it's, it is a, it is, it, it, you are in the hole when you start, you know. Now I'm not saying that that's true of Beverly Heights Church. It's true of the church and it's true of just people. And so to the extent that Beverly Heights is, has people in it, it, it can be present there. Uh, most, most of our congregation has been, has been tremendous in encouragement to, uh, to I think, our wives. Um, but they, they are thrust into a position that, um, that has a job description that nobody writes down for them. And you have to kind of figure that out. And um, I think Holly's been trying to figure that out. We've been figuring that out together. And I think 
I think like Mary, Holly was kind of born to this. She had a sense early on as a young woman that God was preparing her to marry a pastor. It seems to me it's and, something you're called to. Yeah, it's part of the calling. Yeah. You know, when I was on the ministerial committee, Rick was on the ministerial committee too of our presbytery where you examine ministers. It was never a lot of questions directed this way, but there were some. There was always directed towards how does your wife think about all this, particularly candidates. Sure. What does your wife think about this? Because your wife's not on board on this. You're mm. not, you're not going to be successful. So um, I think there's a learning curve for learning to be a senior pastor. There, you know, having been in a different role for a lot of years, you, there's a curve there. Um, and there's a curve of being a pastor's wife. And I think Holly's doing pretty well, but it's, it's, there's, there's um, cost to that. There's effort that's required of that. So, but I'm proud of her. I think she's been, I think she's doing a tremendous job. Well, you both have and, exemplary uh, pastoral wives. And it's, it's no coincidence that they met in the context yeah. they did. Yeah, sure. Well, I uh, and in fact, you wouldn't be here had that meeting not occurred. Right. Yeah, we tell the story on the podcast, or yeah. Mary tells the story yeah. on the podcast that, uh, that she did with us. But I, not only was I the Just beneficiary. So for people who don't understand, perhaps, the few who may not, um, uh, Holly worked for Mary at Jubilee Christian School, yeah. and that was the that was the connection that brought you to Beverly Heights. Yeah, it was Mary's recommendation yeah. that led Rick to have a phone call with me. Right. And uh, uh, one of the great blessings that we've had is that Holly's been the beneficiary of Mary's tutelage. She's been a mentor both in education, but also in pastoral wife ministry. So. We feel incredibly indebted to the Woolings. Um, we can but, edit this all out, <laughs> you know, when Sarah watches it. <laughs> well, no, actually, I think it's been about the best thing we've talked about. I also think that uh, I also think that Holly and I recognize the responsibility laid on us to pay it forward. You know, our investment in Peter is not limited to Peter. I always have Peter and Sarah in view when I think about what we as a church have the opportunity and privilege of, of doing and helping Peter to realize a call. It's always a Peter and Sarah calculation in my mind. And so um, we want to be, and I know Holly wants to be as much for uh, Sarah as Mary was for Holly, and I want to be as much for Peter as Rick was for me. And um, the other side of things, in terms of the kids, his, his and I'm, I'm grateful, I'm, I'm there's not much more that I can say that other than I am completely and utterly grateful to God that um, our children, and I've worked really hard uh, at trying to communicate to our kids, because, and, and it's and because it's all, it's all true. I, I still love going to work every day. <laughs> I mean, I love my job. It, I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. I'm not saying Thank it's... Um, it, it's always it shows peachy. That you love it. Yeah, I, but I love my job. I, yeah. I feel like I was built for this. I was made for this. Yep. And I feel like Eric Little. I was made to run, and when I run, you I feel, feel God's glory. pressure. Yeah, pleasure. his pleasure. And uh, I'm. I feel like I've been allowed to run. And I think my kids see that, and they see that they that we love Beverly Heights, even in this compressed pressure cooker season of the last two and a half, three years. The shine is not off the apple. I love this church. I love the people here. I love the staff. I love... Uh, I love the story you told one day. Maybe it was at staff meeting. Uh, you had been on vacation and you weren't... You, you were watching virtually or something like that or you were visiting another church and the kids said, wait a minute. We've got to go to Beverly Heights. Yeah, when we were, took the six weeks off. Yeah, right. The, the, it, it was, there was the negotiations I had with the staff, the negotiations I had with the policy team, yeah. the negotiations with the session. None of the, all that paled in comparison with the negotiation with my kids <laughs> when it came to us. When they said, we're not going to be at Beverly Heights for six weeks, they were incredulous. I've tried to communicate to my family my love for the church the church and Beverly Heights Church in particular. And I think they have 
they have grown to love the church too. Uh, I pray that that continues. I know I'm, I'm not at the end game yet. Um, and I pray and hope that it continues. But I take delight in seeing my kids love Beverly Heights Church. One of the great things about the, having this job is we have dinner together almost every night, at least five nights uh, a week we are able to gather. There's a lot of nights and weekends, but we always have dinner together. Were you able to do that? Uh, yeah, we, we did. We sort of insisted on it, and, and my sons were involved in school sports and that kind of thing. Right. So sometimes dinner was put off until 6.30, 7 o'clock when they got home. And, of course, I, for the most part, had to get out the door by a, a 7.30 meeting or something. Yeah. But it was a priority. Right. Yeah. I think mostly what they hear and see from, from Holly and I, I hope, and I hope continues, is an eagerness on my part to get out the door every day because I love going to work and I love our church and I'm I'm delighting that they're loving our church too yeah